Hey, welcome back to Sotoku Tech. And this week's topic is DFS or Distributed File Services. And we're going to create this namespace here in my lab. And we're going to add a couple of DFS folders underneath this namespace. So let's take a look at the script here. Basically, I like using PowerShell. You can uh, build up scripts quite easily with the concatenate command like you see here. If you can fill out this part of the sheet correctly, then the scripts will run right. So let's talk about this script. First, this script, we're going to create a folder on the drive, the C drive, call it namespace1, and that's going to be our uh, GFS namespace. Now, we're going to use uh, hidden shares so like you won't see it readily you'll have to know the path and type it manually this is so we can just use this as a IT target essentially for any scripts that you might want to run on a client machine and the user doesn't really have to know where it's running from or uh, because they have no need to access it themselves personally so we create this hidden share and then we create a new DFS root target namespace one pointing to that namespace one dollar sign share hidden share on Tucson DC3 and then we're going to add a couple of folders again here we're going to make a uh, folder in the file system a hidden share and this will be client one pointing to the client one folder on uh, Tucson DC3 and then we'll create a new DFS folder pointing to that within the namespace. And we're going to do the same thing for a server. So if you're logged into a server and need to say you're a technician and you need to install uh, some backup software or something, then you can access the full path and find that software to install. So let's see how this works out. Here's Tucson DC3. We're going to want to get some PowerShell going here. And the first thing we want to do is install the DFS roles and features, etc. So we're going to install Windows feature, and this is FS DFS namespace and FS DFS replication. And we're going to include the management tools. I always throw in the restart at the end, just in case it needs to restart. It won't restart if it doesn't have to. So this is going to take a minute. We'll crop some of this out. Okay. So there we see the Windows features are installed and no restart is needed. I'm going to close Server Manager here because we don't need that. What I do want to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up the DFS management tool that we just added. Have it handy to kind of confirm what we're doing in PowerShell and keep it interesting. I don't really like to work in the GUI unless I have to. Uh, using PowerShell just uh, seems so much more convenient uh, it's instead of clicking around and typing stuff you're copying and pasting from a script and you have a higher likelihood of producing consistent results if you're using PowerShell so again we're going to create a file in the file system we're going to create a hidden share and then we're going to create a new DFS root pointing to that hidden share so here we go okay we created the folder we're sharing it and then we're creating the new DFS root okay so let's just go ahead and here I'm going to refresh yeah, we can see it's already there and when we look at this we see this is our first server hosting that namespace so we've created the namespace Excellent. So now let's go on and create those folders just like we were talking about. So here we're going to create the client one folder in the file system, share it as a hidden share, and then create a new DFS folder pointing to that hidden share. Now we've enabled target failback. If a client makes a request to the local server and the local server's down the client will refer to a different server outside of the site but enabling target failback tells the client to check back with the local server once it's up so that you don't constantly have 
clients talking to servers outside of your site generating a lot of traffic at least that's my understanding of that okay create the folder share it there we go now let's do the same thing for the server one it's kind of beneficial I think you can see if you can this script using Excel as long as you can customize this script for a different scenario so if you're a consultant you could change the domain change the server name change these parameters here and you'd uh, be able to adapt it to any job that you choose to take so uh, let's refresh in here and see what we're looking at okay so we see our folders let's examine how this looks in the file system so first we're going to browse the local file system on Tucson DC3 now you'll note essentially I put the root folder information on the C drive and then I used the actual the folders themselves are going to be on an E drive where you're going to have room for data and it will be separate from the system information essentially Okay, so first on the C drive, there's our DFS root, there's our namespace one, and there's shortcuts to client one and server one. We got this open here. I'm going to see what happens if we try to browse the domain. Echo.local. So we're just going to see sysvol and netlog on here. But namespace one gets us to here okay or we can go to server one okay so just to recap we created a new DFS root and we created a couple of DFS folders in that root and we were using PowerShell to do it all so coming up next instead of creating new root and a new folder we're going to add dfs root targets another server in our environment and we're going to add dfs folder targets as well so that we'll have more than one server in our environment hosting these and they'll replicate the data between them and keep the changes updated so look for more make sure to look for the code down below in the description Thank you for watching Shotoku Tech. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share.